Kind enough to join me this morning is Dr. Mike Bigham. And Dr. Bigham is Chief Quality Officer, Critical Care Center at Akron Children's Hospital. I reached out to Mike because of what we're seeing, not only across the country, but really globally, when we talk about increased numbers of hepatitis cases in our children. And, and Dr. Bingham, let's start right there with what you're seeing in regards to hepatitis. Well, I think you addressed it, I think, uh, nationally and internationally, Almost daily, there's updated numbers. I think the last set of numbers that I've seen, there's been over 450 cases of hepatitis, uh, this sort of influx of hepatitis cases around the globe, uh, and particularly in young children. Most of those kids less than 10 and really even less than five years of age. Uh, Dr. Bingham, let's get into what we're seeing or maybe what you know right now from the CDC and beyond as far as maybe some of the reasons that we're seeing the increase in this virus. Yeah, so I think um, what what the, the sort of the most commonly implicated virus uh, at the root of this hepatitis is the adenovirus. And just to be clear, this hepatitis concept can be a little bit confusing. Hepatitis is inflammation of the liver. The liver serves lots of functions in the body. People might have heard of a hepatitis virus. It is a virus that causes uh, inflammation of the liver, but there are lots of other causes of inflammation of the liver. And the cause that's really being most considered around this outbreak of pediatric or childhood hepatitis is this adenovirus number 41, a specific uh, type of adenovirus. There are those that are wondering, Mike, if COVID, the pandemic, that virus has something to do with a long-term effect on these children. Has there been any proof of that at all? Uh, There's been no proof of that. There's been a tremendous amount of speculation as to a couple things. Number one was the period of time where folks were generally not exposed to each other's viruses when during the pandemic that then we're now newly exposed to those viruses as we've come out of the some of the isolation requirements and, and mask wearing with the pandemic. And so might that might be bodies newly exposed to this virus that hadn't for several years. And alternatively, some folks are wondering whether th- those that have been exposed to the COVID virus might have primed the immune system to react to this this adenovirus. But I think those are pure speculation. There's really no evidence of that right now. With us is Dr. Mike Begum. Again, he is the Chief Quality Officer, Critical Care Center at Akron Children's Hospital. So let's do a little bit more education on this adenovirus. And CDC said 72% of the cases in the UK related to that, 60% in all of Europe, and more than half of the United States. Yes, that's correct. So adenovirus is is in our community. It always has been, and it can um, create a couple different, uh, because there's many different adenoviruses, it can create a couple different uh, sets of symptoms in kids. We take care of kids all the time who have colds or respiratory infections caused from the adenovirus. I think many of us have, have uh, known folks who've had pink eye. Uh, Pink eye is commonly caused by a different uh, subtype of adenovirus. And and this adenovirus number 41 specifically is one that tends to live more in in the stomach and the intestines and can cause nausea and vomiting and diarrhea. And that's the way this adenovirus behaves in in children. Mike, let's get into some warning signs. There's a lot of families listening to us this morning who haven't had much education in regards to hepatitis. So can you go down that road for me? Sure. So I think the most important thing is parents are so in tune to their child and all of the things you would normally have been concerned about for your child are the exact same things that you should remain concerned about. So if your child's having vomiting or diarrhea um, or not eating very well, you should use all of the same signals that you would uh, if you would normally maybe seeking any additional medical care. You know, uh, if your child might appear dehydrated or you're concerned about that, you should call your doctor or, or be seen for that. And so that, that would be typical care, things that we would do every day. I think what's unique about hepatitis is the things that are probably the most unique uh, evidence of liver inflammation or hepatitis are things that might cause your skin or eyes to turn a little bit yellow. That's called jaundice. 
sometimes we see even a little bit earlier before you see the skin or eyes turning yellow, you see the urine um, or looking particularly dark or the stools, uh, the bowel movements looking particularly light in color, and that's all related to some of the functions of the normal liver now being disrupted. With us is Dr. Mike Begum, again, Chief Quality Officer, Critical Care Center, Akron Children's Hospital. Mike, talk to the parents out there. How concerned are you with this? And talk to the parents certainly about their level and how they can try to manage this in their household. Yeah, absolutely. So so I'm as, as concerned as many of the parents are for the reason that we, we don't like any child to fall ill and nonetheless to fall ill with what um, in some small number of cases can be rather serious. And, and so, um, so I share the concern of your listeners, Ray. I think what, what I think is most important is that um, we, we use our good judgment around caring for our children, making sure that we address uh, any risks of dehydration. And then I think what concerns me most, Ray, is the uncertainty, the unknown. I don't think we know exactly uh, what's different about this adenovirus 41 and acting the way it is in our children. And I think that uncertainty is unsettling. We know how to treat inflammation of the liver. Uh, we know how to treat severe cases of those. But what, what we are a little bit unsure of is, is the exact cause, the exact mechanism for that cause. And that's, that's I think, what, what gives me a little bit of pause and raises my attention. Dr. Bingham, let's go full circle, wrap up our conversation this morning. Have you seen any of this at all at Akron Children's Hospital? We have not. We're keeping a very active dialogue. I think we'd be naive to imagine that we aren't going to see some cases. It's spreading. Um, the number of cases, the tally, if you will, is increasing around the world and certainly even across Ohio. I expect we will see some cases, but we haven't yet. All right. Mike, thank you for the time. Appreciate you coming on with us. Thank you, Ray. Take mm-hmm. care. You as well. Dr. Mike Bingham with us, Akron Children's Hospital Chief Quality Officer.